we are here in North Wales. We're looking at another HMO that we're looking to convert. We competed on this one last month. Uh, just had the builders in, going around, sort out all the work we want to do. We're outside the property right now. And well, to be honest, we're gonna have a new gate. We're gonna fix this up a little bit and just generally clean things up. In an HMO, you're not looking to try and go over and above. You know, we're not putting on suites in all the rooms. It's not that kind of house. It's just a little bit rough and ready. He's a bit of a facelift. We want to get tenants in ASAP. So, bush out, tidy all this up, rip out all these um, uh, weeds and all that sort of stuff. Outside the house is pretty good. We have had a damp course done already uh, before we bought it, so that's really, really good. There's no major issues really with the house. A couple of slip tiles, a little bit of missing flashing around the chimney, nothing too crazy. Let's head on in. So we're in the hallway. We're actually gonna leave this wallpaper on. Like I say, the demand around here is insane and actually you can fill pretty much anything. So what we're gonna do is obviously make it a little bit nicer, bring it up to code, bring it up to spec, but we're not gonna spend loads and loads of money on it. So we're not gonna be replastering the walls. So we're just gonna paint over the wallpaper where it's peeled off a bit. We'll uh, knife it out, re-glue it, stick it back down and make it look all right. Again, keep the cost down on deals like this. We're not trying to spend 50K. That'd be, that'd be pretty easy to do. We're not looking to do that. So this is the first bedroom, it's the front room at the front of the house. In here, we're taking the fireplace out, we're gonna basically make it good, so we're gonna board it up, put a little vent in to stop any, any um, condensation and penetrating damp around the bottom of the chimney breast. You see that a lot. Obviously, this is gonna be going. Again, paint the walls, fire door going on here, we're gonna leave the radiator, we're gonna paint that, take the little shelf off, um, all that sort of stuff. And then down here, we actually have a little bit of damp. So if you look outside, we'll show you this, there's a gutter and the water is literally just draining into this corner. So the water drains there, there's a bush in the way, the water runs back into the house, runs in, soaks through, and we have some rotten floorboards. The joists thankfully are okay. Um, they're not actually rotted through, but they are a little bit damp. So we're gonna put a new membrane around that. We're gonna tidy all that up, replace the floorboards, fix the guttering, stick it out there, and then put a little drainage well at the front. And that way we shouldn't have any more damp in this corner and this room will basically be done. Um, new carpet, new paint, standard sort of thing. So in this room, this is gonna be our nice communal room. Uh, we have to put fire door on here, but the door is actually quite narrow. We've got a bit of an issue there because you can't get the kind of fire door that we wanna put in. So you'll see there's a little bit of space here. So we're gonna open up the doorway. We're gonna bring it right here, move the radiator back down the wall a bit. So when you open the door, you're not banging into the radiator. Uh, we're gonna put a new door on here. We're gonna tidy this up, put a little bolt on it, keep it tidy. That's where our consumer unit is. So our electrical stuff. Again, replace the consumer unit board up the, the window there, uh, obviously fireboard under the stairs for our HMO regs. Um, fireplace, again, we're gonna rip that out. We're gonna leave all this storage in here, but we're gonna paint it, tidy it up a bit. Um, it's actually quite useful to have some storage. A lot of time, you know, there's not enough storage in HMO, so we're gonna leave this in. It's not in too bad condition. It looks a lot worse than it is right now. But once we've tidied it up, once we've painted it, it's gonna look pretty good. Um, other than that, this room, again, we're not doing huge amounts to it. We're trying to keep the cost down, but it will look really, really good when we're done. Moving into the kitchen, so basically a brand new kitchen. So we're gonna repaint it. Uh, all the units are gonna be changed. This looks fairly new. We've got a little bit of you know, grot and grime on this, but I think we can clean this up. If we can't, we'll just replace it. But the hood and the splashback are in really, really good condition. So we're actually gonna be able to salvage them. They're not in a terrible position either. They're opposite the sink. And we'll probably put the fridge down there. Normally you'd want it here. So you have your nice golden triangle, but it's not gonna work quite so well with this. So we'll leave the fridge over in this corner. Leave the, uh, the hob here with the extractor, put the sink in front of the window, it's gonna look really, really good. New window going in here, because at the moment it's wooden and single glazed, and we wanna put a nice brand new UPVC um, double glazed window in there. The floor, we're replacing the vinyl, we put laminate down, the concrete pad's a little bit wobbly and it's not really very flat, so a couple of bags of self-leveling and you know we'll have a nice flat floor again. This rear door here is made of wood and it's not really very watertight. In fact, you can see when I close it, there's still some daylight coming out the bottom there. So we're gonna replace this for a nice UPV UPVC tour. Uh, and then out here, we're gonna have a smoking area. So this house has got some interesting features to it. And basically the previous guys who owned this, or maybe the previous previous guys who owned it, uh, have done a bit of DIY work and not very well. So all of this and all this stuff around here is completely unsafe. Uh, the roof really wants to fall in. These glass panes really want to sort of fall out already and it's very easy, you can put your hand through that and you can get sliced open pretty quick. So we're gonna have to obviously have to change all this, sort it all out so when our tenants are in, it's not gonna be a problem. So the plan is we're gonna put a new roof on, just you know, a lean-to roof, bit of felt, nothing too crazy. Try not to disturb the existing render on the property, so I'm gonna faff around with that either. This will all be opened up. We'll leave the beams in that are needed for structural reasons, obviously. And then here, the wall will stay, and we're effectively gonna put like a bit of a picket fence type thing. So some narrow gap fencing down here, allows for some ventilation. It'd be outside, obviously you are outside, but a bit of ventilation, same with a bit of privacy. Uh, and obviously it'll all be cleaned up, it'll look a lot better. Uh, and there's no danger to our tenants, which is awesome. 
Out here, the plan is either, we've got two options, rip it all out and leave the brickwork and turn it into a sort of an outdoor seating area type thing, or we're gonna rip out everything. So if you come in here and see this roof, so this roof is really, really, really poor. I mean, this, these timbers are actually wet. I can wet to the feel. Uh, and you can already see just in the camera, it's bowing and all this is ripping off. You know, it's, as you can see, it's ready to fall down. Um, so what we're gonna do, obviously, just take all this out. But you've gotta be careful because we have a soil pipe here and you need access to the soil pipe in case you, well, in case you have an issue. So we can't block it off entirely. So if we are, we'd probably block it off about here. Uh, but this roof really needs to come down. Basically what happened is that there used to be some slate tiles on that and we're assuming the roof failed and then they updated it and they put on concrete tiles. The only thing is concrete tiles can weigh up to six times as much as a standard slate tile. So if you don't actually change the frame of the roof, the roof will fail ultimately because it's not designed to carry the same amount of weight. And hence, you know, this is why we have this. It's bowing from the outside and when you see it, like honestly, I would be surprised if we could take the weight of a small cat. Like seriously, this, this roof is ready to fall down at any moment. The survey said the same thing. So we knew what we were expecting with this house, um, but we're just gonna rip it all down, make it safe, clean it up, leave the concrete pad, and actually be a nice little seating area when it's done. So unlike most of our properties, this house actually has a really big garden, a really, really nice garden. If you live in this house or vibes in this house, you'll probably do something with it. However, HMO tenants don't really use the garden. Like mainly they go outside and they might have a smoke or they'll sit have a beer in the summer, but in reality, they don't really use the garden. So we're not gonna do much with it. Basically, we're just gonna cut it back, get rid of all the weeds, get rid of all the crap. At the back, there's a couple of like outhouses. We'll take the roofs off them and just leave the stonework at the end so you can use it for storage if you need it for anything. But again, just basically make it safe so it's not gonna hurt anyone. We've got an outside loo here. Again, we'll take the toilet out uh, and we're just gonna put a new sort of wooden door on it and just turn it into storage. It doesn't need to be anything. I'm not gonna spend loads of money plastering out and putting a new toilet in because you're not gonna use it. Same out here. Like, we could potentially do some stuff out here and increase the value, but for an HMO, it's just gonna be more dead communal space. It's not really like we can put a new bedroom in here very, very easily. A new roof is gonna cost a huge amount of money. We're not looking to do that. We wanna keep costs down here. I don't want any part of this. So moving up the stairs, we obviously have a banister here. Uh, as you can see, the banister's not very stable. So we're gonna put a supporting beam over here, replace the post. It is high enough, it does meet code, um, but it's not very strong, very stable. So obviously we're gonna fix that up. Uh, this window is actually fine. It's a bit of a complicated one. It's got a storm window on the front and it, you know, it is technically double glazed overall, but uh, we're just gonna clean it up. We're not gonna change this one. It's not in anyone's room, so it's gonna be a massive issue. This house is a little bit of a funky layout. You know, like I say, it's a different house. It's Welsh, right? So there's a lot of different things that they do around here and different layouts. This is one of them. So what we're gonna do here to make it work, we're gonna put a stud in here and a stud in here, because in here is the bathroom suite. Uh, and we wanna make this into a bedroom, but you can't go through a bedroom into a bathroom because then no one else can use the bathroom. So we're gonna put a stud in here and here, and that'll take us to about 6.8, 6.9 square meters, so more than enough. Fireplace will come out, redecorate, board over the ceiling, make it look a little bit nice. So obviously put a fire door on there, put your two sockets in. This will become a little desk area. You better go in that corner, look really, really nice when we're done. Obviously with HMOs, you have to have safety glass. You can't be having single panes of glass like this. They're a bit of a safety hazard, so we're just gonna board over it. So one thing to consider when you're rejigging rooms around, because obviously this isn't designed as a bedroom, this is, this is kind of just a, a space. When you have a bedroom, to make it a bedroom, you have to have a window in it. You can't have a room without a window. You have to have a window in. So what we're gonna do is knock a hole in this wall. We don't wanna knock through the chimney breast, obviously. We wanna knock through the outside wall. This is a gable wall at the end of terraced. Thankfully, this bails us out a little bit, so we can put a window in here, and then obviously, we've got some natural light, that room will work quite well then, and it'll be a little bit brighter, because it's a little bit dark here, and it's still daytime, the light's on, but it'd be nice to have a little bit more natural light, and we use up to code. Awesome. So in here, we're just gonna replace the bathroom, as simple as that. So we have a new three-piece suite, we'll rip out some of this old boxing work, rip off the woodwork here. This, we think, is actually an old chimney. There is a little chimney stack at the top there, probably from the kitchen downstairs, back when, you, obviously, you had fireplaces and things like that in your kitchen. Um, but we're gonna put a new three-piece suite in here. The boiler's in here. The boiler, we're just gonna give a service. We're gonna flush the system. It should be fine. It is a good boiler, but it is a little bit old. So we'll see how that's gonna work out. Um, fingers crossed we can get away with just giving it a service. We won't actually have to do anything to it, but we think it's gonna work all right. And the, the owners did say that the heating does work and it was warm when we first viewed it. So I don't think we're gonna have any issues there. Uh, it's, it's off at the moment. Got a new door on here, tidy it all up. We're gonna skim pretty much all of this room. We're gonna use basically cladding, which is like shower board. It's a bit like a piece of plasterboard, but it's waterproof. It's, it usually has like a marble effect or something like that, or you know a sparkly effect. Uh, it's much cheaper than using tiles. 
looks just as good, lasts just as long. A bath in that corner with a shower over the top, we'll board that and then new three-piece suite. We'll probably end up putting the sink maybe on this wall or maybe over here. We're not entirely sure yet, but the bath will stay there and the toilet will stay there. It'll be a nice little bathroom when it's done. And obviously with the new entrance, it means you can get into this without having to go through a bedroom. So in this room, again, nothing crazy going on. We're just gonna redecorate, replace the carpet, take the little fireplace out and um, obviously make it compliant. So new fire door, new light fin, smoke alarm, etc., etc. This is a pretty straightforward room. There's not a lot that needs doing to it. It's pretty much a bedroom already. No need to go overboard. Cheeky pun there for the contractors. Same kind of story in this room, really. We're gonna change the carpets. We're gonna change, obviously, the paint colors, remove the dado rail, probably take off this, uh, this paper here unless we can repair it. But the most likely, we're gonna take that off, make all the rooms smooth. Um, this Again, this is gonna be a similar sort of spec and standard and style that we do with all our other HMOs. Uh, it's just this one, the wall's already in pretty good condition. We haven't got a lot to do with them. The decorators can get away with, with sorting it out with some bit of easy fill, bit of deco court, nothing too crazy. Um, the house is in pretty good condition. So major issues with it. Bit of rotting downstairs. Obviously, we need to put a window in. Uh, needs a new kitchen, needs a new bathroom. Uh, and then the roof needs a little bit of work. So there's a bit of flashing I mentioned around the chimney at the top. And then we're gonna redo the repointing on the ridge tiles as well. Um, so that obviously we don't have any leaking or anything like that. This is basically just a rough and ready HMO, bringing it up to spec, making it compliant, giving it a quick refurb, fixing some of the small problems we have with the house. So a few things we didn't initially spot on the viewing, the rotting in the floorboards, for example. And so it's definitely got worse the last few months while we've been buying it with all the rain, you know, and all the wind and all the storms and that sort of stuff. And we're quite near the coast as well. So we'll have to fix up some of that sort of stuff, go back to the investor, agree all the schedule works and go from there.